what is good friends and welcome back yes i'm drinking because it's friday and because the exclusive lounge is open it's this time where you have to drink to obtain those statues and you're wondering which officer should you go first or maybe you have enough statues to awaken one skill yes those officers they're not cheap, they're expensive, and you wanna make the right decision. I understand that. That's why I'm gonna make a tier list of those exclusive officers, those pay to win officers, as we have a black sheep in the lot to help you pick the right officer or skill. In this tier list, to keep this video short, I'm not gonna go in depth. If you want to examine every single officer in this tier list i will put the link in the video description below where you can access to the full review in this tier list i will talk about their strength their weakness the pairing and which skill you should go for if you can only afford one skill without any further ado let's go all right you know the drill with the tier maker we have s tier to d tier s tier being the very best officer to get d tier is don't bother don't waste your money we will start with our black sheep guardian of truth so guardian of truth is not an exclusive lounge officer but he's a true pay to win meaning that the only way to unlock him and awake him is by spending money you can never get him for free no matter how long you play and he's the original pay to win officer yet he is outdated so why am i saying that he's not really strong in today's standard of warpath his tactical skill only deal 1200 damage plus 25 percent coefficient the rest of his skills are mid uh, even below mid so he doesn't offer any skill except maybe the ballistic one that increased the penetration damage of this officer's to by 40%. You could work on that skill if you really want to spend on this officer. And if you look at his awakened skill, it only increased the damage resist of 10%. It's really nothing. And why I'm saying is outdated is all the Gen 3 officers that you will access after 75 days of playing Warpath will blow him right out of the water without any context so unless you want to be competitive you want to crush the enemy the first 75 days of playing warpath then go ahead spend on him spend on him if you're pissing money away or you're wiping yourself with a 20 dollar bills otherwise he's a horrible value like i said he's outdated he's not strong at all so is really a bad investment. And I use the word investments loosely here. Is actually a really bad value. So for that reason, Guardian of Truth, he belongs in D tier. And hopefully Lilith can either fix him or just delete him as he serves no purpose. The second officer at the other spectrum of the tier list, S tier, Steel Phoenix. If you're looking for the very best officer, an armor specialist, look no further. Steel Phoenix is the officer to get. She's not the latest, but she's the greatest. Her skills are actually bonkers. I mean, her tactical skill is fine. She deals 1800 damage plus a 15% damage intensity, which is up there. It's quite strong, but she got some pretty amazing passive skill her special skill will uh, reduce the load time and boost the normal attack which is great so you could go for this skill and her awakened skill is crazy she is the only officer in this game to provide a shield and some hp regeneration which make her fierce on the light tank but she works great on any tank maybe not the super heavy but you know what i mean mbt helicopter light tank i mean go ahead she is very strong she is worth every penny you won't be disappointed i have her and i enjoy playing with the light tank i'm pairing her actually with a rapier 
and Rapier and Steel oh, Phoenix. Excellent combo for hurry. the Light Tank. Steel Phoenix, she belongs in the S tier without any contest. Another officer that belongs in the S tier, it's Lady Liberté. Lady Liberté is the best officer for the artillery. Anti-tank gun, rocket truck, howitzer, you name it. She will make your unit shine. She is so strong. Her tactical skill is absolute insane. She will deal 2000 damage coefficient and also reduce the troop load time by 15% for 8 seconds. She got other great skills as the increase in firepower of 40%. Also, her special skill, uh, you have a 25% chance to silence the enemy ground force troop for 2 seconds. It can be triggered every 4 seconds. So when you are in an artillery duel and you can silence the skill on the enemy, you gain the upper hand. For sure. So Lady Liberté, right now I pair her with Don't Red Heat, waiting. which is another exclusive officer. And if you are a artillery man or artillery woman, you love to play with the Howitzer, you already enjoy the skill of Antonina, and you're looking for the very best officer that will also throw lead at five grid range, then look no further. Lady Liberté, she may not be the latest, but she is the best officer for any artillery so for that reason she belongs in the s tier here comes the cowboy the latest officer being released for the bistro his name is wings of wanderlust i will put him in a tier right there why not s tier so why not s tier is he's a versatile he wear the versatile tag is good for any units but is not the best for any unit I don't have him awakened, only have one skill so far, but I've been playing with this officer from time to time. I try with different unit. I try it on the light tank. He's not the best for the light tank, but he's still strong. He would be ideal on the infantry troop, which is a unit that I don't have. Uh, why is that? Is a lot of his skills are ramping in power, meaning that the increase the longer you stay on the battlefield. So if you play with a light tank, which the light tank lose a lot of units in combat, his skill will be affected by those losses. So you really want to uh, assign him to a resilient troop like the MBT, the infantry. You really work well on those type of units. As for the artillery, if you love to play with the artillery, you are probably used to launch the artillery skill on your enemy to one shot them with this is not possible with cowboy as is tactical skill or awakened skill doesn't inflict any damage it, it just boosts his regular damage which is not bad but if you're looking for that one shot effect for the artillery is not the officer to go only spend money on him if you plan to adapt or change your style then it would be a good value but you know what we say jack of all trade master of none he's strong if you're looking for one single skill i would go for this one this one is good for the light tank if you're looking for two other good skills but maybe for a unit that is more resilient either look for his protection skill or his last passive skill just getting warmed up those will work great but for an mbt helicopter maybe or even the artillery so he's not bad don't get me wrong he's awesome but he's not a specialist and if you're looking for a specialist looks elsewhere he's still good i'm gonna rank him in a tier for that reason our second artillery specialist red heat i will put her in a tier yeah I'm happy with her on A tier. Red Heats, what's so special about her? Because on paper, she's not that great. So what's the secret? What's her thing? Well, Red Heat, she is a splash damage queen. Her splash damage or area of effect damage when you attack one unit and all the other units nearby within one map grids will also get attacked. She is a class leader in splash damage. Don't keep if you look at her tactical skill, she will deal 200 damage on every troops around your main target as long as they are one grid map apart. 
but this is 200 every seconds for four seconds so it means 800 damage right off the bat she's good but her other skill this one whenever this officer's troop inflicts burning on the enemy increases the damage coefficient of 50% I hate people so now it's not promises. 200 per troop it's 300 per troop per seconds for four seconds that's 1200 for all the troops around your main target the main target is still at a thousand but this skill right here boosts the tactical skill by 40 percent so you will deal 1400 on your main target plus 1200 per additional target there's no reduction on that so this is quite crazy uh, she's ideal for base defense or attacking a cluster of targets. Right now, I'm pairing her with Lady Liberty, and I'm very happy about her skills. She really rocks. So if you're looking for a single skill, look for this one. Increase the damage skill boost by 40%. This one is also not bad. It increases the damage intensity of this officer artillery troop by 25%. Uh, just keep in mind that this one is specific to the artillery as this one can be uh, applied to any officer or any troop so for that reason i put ready in a tier if you are an artillery man once again and you already awaken lady liberty you're looking for a second strong officer look no further ready she got it our next bistro officer dark wing he is the only fighter plane exclusive launch officer to be available so far so what's special about darkwing well he's a fighter plane specialist his intercept uh, coefficient is off the charts 50 percent and he deals a lot of critical strikes he may not be like a dominant exclusive lounge officer however if you want to develop the airplane the air force if you have a strong fighter and you want to add an additional fighter so you really focus on the air force he is a must he is a must have <laughs> but you have to be careful as he's highly focused on offensive skills he doesn't have any protection so if you want to train him i suggest you put a strong defense or a strong protection skill training or pair him with a strong protection officer like nagarani right here she will uh, kind of balance uh, your officer pairing one good skill is this one the intercept boost by 50 percent the special skill is also good uh, but there's better now available from other officers so all in all a solid pick if you like to focus on the air force go ahead if not you can pass it's not a huge loss for you uh, it really shines on a strong jet so for that reason i will put Darkwing in the A tier. Now we have Professor Payne. So Professor Payne, why in C tier and not B tier? Well, C tier, why? He got a damage coefficient of 1800 plus 450 only if the troop HP is over 70%. Below 70%, you will only deal 1800. It's still good, but there's a condition to respect and you need to be aware of that. It will, you will see it on the battlefield, the difference. Now, is active healing, the 20% chance is quite low, and the healing coefficient, it's nothing crazy. This one increased firepower 20% and HP 20%. It's kind of average, nothing crazy here. If you're looking for a single skill to work on, I recommend the adrenaline one. You will increase the officer's skill boost of this officer's troop by 30%. Before Lilith changed the description, it said that it will increase the officer's kill by 30% on both officers. They said that the new description will not affect the effect on the battlefield. So you can take that word and pretend that this 30% will affect both officers. As for his awakened skill, nothing crazy. Increase the damage intensity by 25%, but reduce the damage resist of 10%. It's kind of a the, it's kind of a handicap here. Not a fan of that, but regardless, he does the job. If you're about to finish him, keep working on him. He's still worth uh, awakening. But if you have to pick a different officer, 
I would go for another guy. For that reason, Professor Payne will stay in C tier. Now let's talk about the black version of Professor Payne, Lord of Order. I will put him in B tier. They're almost the same. But if you have to pick one, you can only pick one, I would go with Lord of Order and I'll tell you why. Lord of Order deal the same amount of damage if you don't respect the condition of pain, meaning that it will deal 1800 damage plus you got a shield. So you lose, you don't have that active healing, but you get a shield and it's a fair shield. Nothing crazy, but it's better than active healing in my opinion. Damage intensity 20% plus another 20% if your target heavy shield. That's kind of useful. And this one uh, increased the HP by 30%. And you recover 1% HP when the troop is not in combat. So you have a passive healing and you have a shield. And this one uh, increased the skill resilience by 30%, which is great. And you have a critical strike increase by 30% when you awaken this officer. All in all, I prefer Lord of Order on the battlefield than uh, Professor Payne. That's why I rank him above Professor Payne. The first officer to be released from the Bistro is Saber of the Nation. Saber of the Nation. He's getting old, but he's still got it. That's why I will put it in B tier right there so why in b tier despite being the country. oldest officer well like i said he still got it i mean he's still in my lineup and i appreciate his tactical skill he's the equalizer if you love to play with the howitzer and you love to play on the field and you love to take out enemies toe to toe so you want to do an artillery duel he's the officer to get by far his tactical skill is quite strong eight at 1200 plus 100 per map grid between you and the target so assign this guy to lady liberty or antonina and you will see this tactical skill shine in your favor now another skill that is great is this one so when this officer artillery attack an enemy with less than 50 percent hp increase the troop damage by 30 percent but what makes him different than the other officers is his awakened skill. So you are in a duel. And in a duel of artillery, the winner is most of the time the one that fires first. And if you fire first and that first shot is the tactical skill, you will win that duel for sure. So that's why. And the probability, the odds of uh, casting this tactical skill is 30%, which is quite good. So in my opinion, that's why he's still relevant today. Uh, some of you may be still working on this guy. I would suggest that keep working on him. He's worth it. If you love to play with the Howitzer and you're looking for a replacement on your favorite artillery, look no further uh, Saber of the Nation, he is the man. So Saber, he sits in B tier. He could almost be in A tier, but let's keep it in B tier. The only bomber specialist from the Bistro is Rictus Reaper or the Joker lookalike. And I will be comfortable enough to rank him in B tier. Why is that? So Rictus Reaper, why I don't have him awakened yet? First reason is back then I didn't have a strong bomber, so I couldn't justify the investment. Second reason is his skills are average, and he's a Gen 1 officer, but he's not the aging well. If you compare it to the latest thing. offering in the regular officer, the free-to-play officers, uh, if you look at Rising Star and uh, Lone Eagle, both of those, Rise both of them have face. better skills than Rick's. Let's look at his tactical skill. He will deal 8,000 in damage coefficient, plus he deals some splash damage, but nothing crazy. His offense skill is average, 30%. Seems like a lot. Well, maybe it was a lot back then. Now in today's standard, it's not much. Protection skill, not great. His special skill is good, though. I will give him that. Uh, you will... You have a 40% chance to recover HP after killing an enemy unit and the coefficient is up to 500 not bad so that will help you uh, 
survive while you're doing your bomb run but the, his biggest compromise is its awakened skill it's a passive one and at the end of your bombing run he will drop one last bomb dealing 2500 damage and 20 percent less to each additional target increase its cruising speed by 20 percent for 10 seconds all in all that's not bad the problem is if you are bombing under fire you may not have a chance to deal or to complete your bombing run you may only bomb one pass two passes and then you uh, garrison or you return to base so you will not get that 2500 bomb so it's a big condition it's a big compromise for that reason that's why i didn't awaken him if you are using two or three bombers then you may not have a choice to awaken him otherwise there's better options out there that are completely free so for that reason rictus reaper he belongs in d tier is as useful as guardian of truth in my opinion that's it for today's friend i hope that this video will help you make the right decision so drink away the weekend is near and i'll catch you on the next video see ya